This coffin is alive. It's made from mushrooms that soak up the toxins human bodies leave behind, and it eliminates the need for massive amounts of wood, steel, and concrete used to bury the dead. Funerals in the U.S. use enough of these materials every year to build a tower of caskets the size of the Empire State Building. The Loop Coffin grows in a lab in seven days and absorbs into the soil in under two months. But can it replace traditional burials? We visited the creator of the world's first mushroom coffin to find out. This is definitely my baby, yes. <laughs> I think about it when I wake up, I think about it when I go to sleep. Yeah, I see them. We got some friends. Bob Hendricks searches for the building blocks for a loop coffin in Delft's Hout Forest in the Netherlands. It's easy to find mushrooms, but it's hard to find the specific one you need. <laughs> some are edible, but some might kill you as well. Aha! Uh -huh. He harvests samples to bring back to the lab every weekend. And this is not the one we use, but we, we could make a coffin out of it. We can try. This one might be the holy grail. Here you can see all the wires, so it's almost like veins of the organism. It's mycelium, thin white fibers that grow easily on all kinds of surfaces. Mycelium is the root structure of mushrooms, and simply said, they're just the recyclers of nature. So everything that turns into death, they turn it into life. It feeds on decaying plants and animals, expanding at a rate of half an inch per day. From this little piece of mycelium, we can grow a living coffin. Really? Yeah. Back at Loop's headquarters, Bob and his team mix the mycelium with wet sawdust and spray it with a secret sauce that helps it grow. Then they seal it in a plastic mold shaped like a coffin. This part of the process is also a secret. Fungus fills in the empty space and it dries within a week. It's a building technique that Bob has been experimenting with for years. Right now, we tend to work with dead materials while I envision a world in which we work together with organisms. The final product is light but sturdy. It's almost like a sort of styrofoam material, so it's really rigid, yet it's super lightweight. It can carry up to 440 pounds. Each coffin is lined with a layer of moss sourced from a local farm. The moss has two functions that it helps to decompose the body faster and rich in biodiversity. And the other one is to give humans the experience of becoming part of the cycle of life. A body interned in a loop coffin should not be embalmed or wear any synthetic materials, so it can transform into soil faster. That was an exciting prospect for Johannes Penheisen. The 82-year-old doctor became one of the first people buried in a loop coffin last year. This is his final resting place, in a special area designated by the Dutch government for natural burials. It became something like, like, like a beautiful thing, you know, because it was a special coffin and he really liked it. Most people's deaths leave a much larger footprint. A conventionally buried body contains a mix of over 200 chemicals, from tobacco residues to dry cleaning chemicals, pesticides, heavy metals, and embalming fluids. It can take up to 12 years for an embalmed body to turn into a skeleton, but soft tissues release toxic chemicals and microbes after only a few months. And traditional coffins contain preservatives, paint, and have metal handles. All of these substances can leach into soil and water, making it unhealthy for the living. Loop coffins can fix this because of a process called mycoremediation. That means that mushrooms will chow down on almost anything, even pollution. These fungi, of course, can have a lot of intake of um, heavy metals and all kinds of uh, chemical components because they, they store it in their hefe, in their, in their fungus body. But breaking old habits can be difficult. Replacing bodily fluids with preservatives started during the American Civil War. The bodies of fallen soldiers needed to be transported long distances for burial. Embalming made it possible for President Lincoln's open casket to remain on display for a three-week train trip from Washington to Illinois. And it has been standard practice ever since. Bob wants people to return to the natural practices that existed for most of history. As humans, why are we not part of the cycle? And then we can actually enable people to feed the earth instead of pollute it. The company sold about 100 coffins last year, priced at 1,500 euros a piece, about 1,800 US dollars. That's cheaper than even the most basic wooden caskets, 
and a fraction of the $7,500 that Americans pay for a mid-priced funeral. Loops off to a modest start, but globally, green funerals are becoming more popular. People are really interested in new things in the funeral uh, business, and uh, uh, our members are asking if they can uh, use the loop uh, coffin for their burial. Today, they make up a small proportion of overall funerals, but two in three American consumers say they'd consider a green burial. And they have a growing list of over 300 providers to choose from. Given enough time, we all return to dust. But Bob Hendricks hopes we'll choose instead to become compost. <laughs>